from one of my favourite medium tanks to one of my favourite heavies. This is the FV215B, the current British tier 10. I'm going to be very, very sad when this thing is replaced by the Chieftain. Uh, it'll probably play similarly, but it just, I don't know, this thing has some kind of weirdo charm to it. It has the excellent gun and gun handling of the Conqueror on a chassis which actually does kind of have armor. It also has a lot of hit points. So you can play it as a heavy tank. And so in light of that, I decided to go south. Of course this tank does have a frontal engine, so it does tend to catch fire if it gets penned through the front. I believe its fuel tanks are also pretty exposed to frontal fire. But does have decent slope on the armor. It's not very thick, I think it's only about 150 millimeters, but it's quite well sloped. It also is sloped on the sides above the tracks, so you have that little bit going for you as well. And the tracks are of course quite broad, like all high tier British tanks. King Tuck comes down with me, Wheezy goes Luro. This is a good enough setup. I'm up near the front, so I'm not going to have too many people blocking me. And I can use King Tut as armor. Which is what, you know, it's, it's he's in an IS-7, that's his job, basically. In most cases, the IS-7 is better at tanking than the mouse or E-100. You can see how, just how accurate and, and powerful this gun is. Even as these guys are trying to get away from our shots, this thing just puts out shells quickly and it puts them where they're aimed, especially at this close range. Tortoise doesn't appear to know he's exposed all his weak spots. Well, he obviously does now. The enemy Artie doesn't actually have a line on us down here, so we're pretty much Artie safe. All we have to worry about is the tanks in front of us. Hardest has got our rear, so nothing's going to flank us through the middle. This is the perfect setup. When you push south on this map, this is the kind of thing you want to be seeing. We just push forward a little bit and try and deal with one tank at a time. King Tut tanks the hits. I put out the damage. I was rolling out my frontal a little carelessly here. I mean, I was still angled, but obviously I have to present a lot of front to get shots around the corner. That IS-8 is shooting heat. Why, I'm not sure. His gun would be able to pen this thing anywhere with AP if he aimed. But, bad's gonna bad, I guess. The thing that annoys me most about puppy gold use is not that they're using gold to kill me faster, but rather they're using gold when they don't need to, and it's a waste of credits. <laughs> I know it's their credits they're wasting, it just irritates me. Anyway, now we've got a couple tanks bottled up on this corner here, the Pat and the T-34, and a bunch of tanks that don't want to crest, because they know what's going to happen to them if they do give a little too much side and, a little, and uh, not enough scrape there. So I'm just jostling around for position behind King Tut, trying to encourage them to shoot his frontal pipe, which they're going to have a lot of trouble penning, while presenting as little side as possible. The T-34 apparently thinks that either King Tut or myself is a hacker come across this guy before, he's really bad. I'm actually surprised he's pale green on my XVM now. Last time I saw him, he was deep red and he was calling everyone hackers. This thing quite comfortably pens the front of a T-28. Then it looks like all we've got left to deal with is the T-95. I'm not sure if he's AFK or if he's just... Tied up with those guys north. I think he was AFK. But I mean, look at the accuracy of this gun. I'm shooting his hatch over a hill. I can barely see him. 
and two of those three shots hit. Like I say in chat, damage farmer, that's what this tank is. It just fires so quickly, it very rarely bounces, and it does so much damage in such a short amount of time. It's just an excellent tank, and it has the, the same excellent fire and the move capability that all the British heavies have. And so you can just roll around a map cleaning people up without any worries. I mean, it, it's what the Conqueror wanted to be, but didn't have the armor to be. The Conqueror, you have to kind of hang back a bit. You can't really play aggressive or you risk losing your tank. This thing, you still can't charge in like you're an E100, but you can aggressively position and put yourself up in the front line. Obviously, being a tier 10, you need to at times. So a very, very, very good tank. Um, a little weird, does take a little getting used to it, but like I said, I'll be very disappointed when it goes. Um, this will not be made a premium or anything, this tank did not exist, but Wargaming basically took a Conqueror turret, up armored it, slapped it on top of the 215B tank destroyer chassis, just to give the British a tier 10 heavy that wasn't the Chieftain, and then they decided, fuck it, we'll give them the Chieftain anyway, because apparently... Uh, they discovered the Chieftain's armor isn't as impressive as was once thought. But that's, I mean, it's its good news in a way, but it's, it's also bad news, because it is a unique tank, and it is a lot of fun. And like I said, I think the Chieftain will play more or less the same. It'll have passable armor, but not very, you know, not great. It'll have very good gun handling, and the same gun, or slightly better gun, maybe. It's going to be very similar, but it won't have that rear turret weirdness, and it, it just, it probably won't feel quite the same. It'll feel more sluggish, I'd imagine, being the Chieftain. Anyway, thanks for watching. There'll be plenty more on the way, and as ever, good luck on the field.